Not a single thing around here makes sense. This is downright bananas. Hey, nameless gal. Can we have a little talk over yonder? Uh, just me? Why can't we just talk here? Um, it's okay. You guys go ahead. I'll wait for you over there, March. What are you up to? I only just convinced her everything's fine, you know. Awful chummy with someone you just met, ain't you, friendo? Alright, great nameless one. Drop the act already. What's the deal on your side? When did you guys start laying eyes on Dr. Primitive? Dr. Primitive? Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Uh, let's swap intel then. You first. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Exactly as we suspected. So, did you find anything at Dreamflux Reef? There ain't a thing here. But who cares? Seen this plenty of times, and there's only one solution. We've all rid this rodeo, so I reckon I don't need to spell it out. Um, yes! I totally agree! Oh, sweet. All right, then. Uh, help to me tear become this place a high-ranking member. <laughs> uh, 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 I was just trying to make a joke, but you took it even further? God, you're ruffling my bananas now. That wasn't a joke. If it were the IPC lackeys... I'd have them lined up right this instant for a one-way ticket to the other side. But they only planted kids in this place. I can't be using my ways on them. It's not the first time Dr. Primitives used others as scapegoats. I ain't gonna step on the same rate twice. But aren't you doing that right now? Falling for the trap? <laughs> Ever seen a squib load? When timed right, it's more effective than unloading a full clip. Now, I got no clue what kind of monkey business this club's up to. But I know from the static noise at Dream Flux Reef that they're sure as heck interested in Pinnacony. They'll definitely step in if we raise the roof off of this place. Unless you've got a better idea you can think of, let's do it my way, Star Member. I do have an idea, sort of. Just hold your horses. Let's go back and meet Montana first. Remember, be nice. Oh, 
don't worry about me. I thought about it earlier. Panacone sees a ton of visitors and transiting travelers. It's only normal to meet people of all sorts of background here. Yeah, I was wanted on a few occasions too. Uh, maybe a dozen times? Uh, never mind, that's not important now. Let's talk about the Slumber Nana Association. There's an important seminar scheduled for today, right? Are we in time for that? Oh, March! You remembered wrong again! This is far grander than a seminar! I guess you could call it a theophany? In just a bit, we'll get to see the actual Slumber Nana monkey in the flesh! Holy bananas! There are rip-offs of this thing! <laughs> That's not it! Slumber Nana Monkey went viral overnight, but people have different opinions on how the fad began. No matter what people choose to believe, there has to be a Slumber Nana Monkey that started it all, and we're about to see it! The original Slumber Nana Monkey in all its unfiltered glory, free from all sorts of stereotypes. Uh, I'm not quite following, but it sounds impressive, I guess. We have a few other students from campus who attended a few theophanies before. What did they say about it? Nothing really, but they had this look. Um, like they'd been to the world's end. Every single one of them looked like they were in a state of absolute bliss. I want to feel like that too. Well, ain't that something? Reckon I gotta see it myself. Still got a bit to wait, huh? Uh, hey, hold up! Where are you heading off to again? Hey there, pal. Banana, banana, banana? Hey, you can see me, right? Banana, banana, banana. now watching TV got to be this complicated oh you're back uh, this is the theophany that Montana told us about the only way to see slumber Nana monkey is apparently through forming some kind of connection with the assistant Nana thank you for waiting oh another member hoping to see slumber Nana monkey no, not her. Just me. Uh, trying to worm your way in again, huh? But you won't be able to establish a connection if you know nothing about Slumber Nana Monkey. You look unfamiliar. But you don't seem like a regular member either. <laughs> That's right. You've been told I'm quite talented. Huh? What talent do you have? I'm Denisovan244, March 7th. Oh, 
It's you! Yes, I've heard about you. You have the potential to truly reach the source! Please, come over to me. Uh, not so fast. What are you up to this time? The dimmer of us two plays a bait. The other gets ready to fight. Keep watch outside. Hey, wait! Hey! Uh, hello? That was fast. Uh. Really now? So he's actually talented? Simple, miss. This gentleman here, he wants to visit the past more than anyone else in the room. Hmm. What's the big fudging idea here? Is this all there is? We meet again, sir. <laughs> I've seen run-down saloons fancier than this place. You call this a theophany? Crafting an attractive but deceptive vision is a crude method, entirely opposite to the values that the Slumber Nana Monkey aims to share with people. Many other members before you have come here seeking something, but these tend to be the usual truth, happiness, peace, and the like. Unfortunately, there are no answers here. Only one question. Will this make you worse off? What is this fudging nonsense? <laughs> Have patience. I will explain everything in detail. For example, if I asked you to give up malt juice, what would be your first thought? want to get a drink before that, won't you? That should be the exact thought in your head right now. Uh -huh. Don't pull that nonsense on me. A classic will always be a classic. Ah, hold on there, partner. Sometimes you gotta try something new. Introspection is key no matter the hour. <laughs> you see, these are the thoughts that come to your mind when you were given that question. Sadly, it appears that whichever option you choose, there will be some lingering regret. With that, let's go on to imagine a scenario that doesn't hold true in reality. If the dependence on the drink was never there to begin with, this problem would naturally not exist, and the resulting thoughts would also disappear. Here's a question. Will this make you worse off? <sighs> Holy bananas. What's gone into me? He's right. I I don't have the urge to drink at all. <sighs> Messing around in my head like that. No wonder the synesthesia beacon's all screwed up. <sighs> no. This busted thing can't do it alone. So who's the scoundrel behind all this? Moving on. Let's turn our attention toward issues that are a little more complicated? Say, your hatred for the IPC. Ah. 
I see. That is one vast and endless wall of rage you have there. Since you know, think before you speak. Don't go asking for trouble, you banana. Calm yourself. Slumber Nana Monkey wouldn't preach about forgiveness or burying the hatchet. Now that's something even I'd find annoying. Instead, it'd support you taking vengeance into your own hands. Just like this. Eternal. There's more to life. Good times. No. Time to say bye. Boom. <laughs> Every petal and all will be swept away by the wind. I weep for the departed. It did not fall. Still waters of oblivion. How do you feel? What a load of hogwash. You reckon taking aim at phony targets is gonna get your blood pumping? I understand. But venting your anger can help relieve the tension you built up. And when that happens, you'll be less averse to accepting unpalatable advice. Now, just like before, imagine a scenario that doesn't hold true in reality. For a person who has made revenge their sole purpose in life, what would happen if their hatred were to vanish? Will this make you worse off? Yes. Rotten bananas. What wacky theory are you trying to prove? Well, what the heck? I actually feel pretty good right now. I, yeah. Who banana fudging cares about revenge? Excellent. You're very perceptive. Let's move on to the next lesson then. Galaxy Ranger. I know very well, hatred isn't something that can be easily erased. This will be your toughest lesson. But I'll be with you throughout. Now then. Will this make you worse off, Mr. Ranger? I ain't quite sure what you're talking about, but you sure seem mighty fascinating. Nice to meet you, partner. What's your name? This isn't the first time we've met, but you can call me Prof. Nana Primon. Oh, a cultured soul, then. Oh, I'm just a research ape. And you, you'll soon be mentioned in my research report. Handling the commotion at the university is easy. The main concern has always been here, Dreamflux Reef. If it weren't for the need to eliminate you as a variable, I wouldn't have purposely slowed down. And with that, the class here has come to an end. Get a move on, dear student. I'll be waiting for you at the end to unveil a new chapter of your life.
Erudition is but an affliction that the average person cannot bear. Losing it will not make you any worse off. Forgetting these colors will not make you any worse off. Sounds will only introduce frustration and anxiety. like that. What happened? Uh, no time to explain. Hurry, I need your help. I'll go wake Montana. Hurry! Huh? huh? Wait. What's going on? This is my grace, Miss Nameless. As for your ranger friend, though, you just single-handedly destroyed his path to happiness. Uh, stay where you are. Don't come any closer. Naturally. Resorting to violence is not my intention. I'm only here to prove something, not to subjugate. To prove that my viewpoint is in line with the desires of humans. Montana? March 7th? What are you trying to do? Oh, gosh, Montana! Don't you see what's going on? The bad guy's the one behind you! <gasps> How could you say that? And here, I thought you loved Slumber Nana Monkey from the bottom of your heart! Y you Banna? Oh, Montana. Uh, I think... Let's get out of this place now. Hurry! As you wish. I look forward to you providing the last link in my proof. You're a sicko! This way! Why do you seem so out of it? Haven't you woken up yet? Bana... Bana... Bana? Problem. Why are you blocking our way? You're free to leave if you wish, but not with my subject. He's still under observation. 
Your subject? Mm-hmm. Unlike typical humans, his modified body is impervious to physical deterioration. The steely grit and determination that never wavers. He can easily resist all forms of corruption. <laughs> A galaxy ranger like him. It'll be worthwhile to see what I can turn him into. Uh... Let me guess. You want to call for help right away. Because you're convinced these monkeys, formerly humans who have lost their minds, are under my command. If that's the case, why do you believe that you really woke up the ranger? Uh, that can't be right. Mr. Galaxy Ranger, would you please fire a shot at this young lady? But, sir, killing folks is against the law. Especially when it's a lovely lady like her. I'm the star of the show now. All because of this here gun. Oh, it's a nice gun, all right, but... Using it to take a life? I have no such intention. How about the two of you settle your own scores while I'll be on my way? You? Wait a minute. Is this what you wanted me to see? That's right. This is merely a hollow dream. So even if they turned into monkeys here, their physical bodies in the real world will not be subjected to any biological deterioration. The ranger's extraordinarily staunch and unyielding mind made him an even more valuable specimen to be studied. His mind hasn't been completely wiped out. Instead, he is neither a monkey, nor is he a galaxy ranger. He's a young Boot Hill, one from many years back. Back when his homeland hadn't been ravaged, when he lived as a carefree child in the grasslands. A partial regression. How very interesting indeed. If memory serves, this version of him is at least ten years removed from the older Boot Hill, when he first fired a shot at a bandit. Miraculous. Be it the Sweet Dreams troop or myself, he can end it all with just one shot. But it just so happens that the decision to pull the trigger has to be made by his soul rather than his body. The child version of him now is completely incapable of firing his own gun. All right, Mr. Cowboy, come to me. Let's finish your final lesson now. A galaxy ranger that stands on the side of Dr. Primitive. A traitor born from nurture. This warrants several more research papers. Dreams. Uh, hey! Don't go over there! Be quiet, young lady. And mind your manners while class is in progress. Yes, of course. This dream is based off your memories. What do you last remember? Were you herding or chopping firewood? Neither of those. I was eating some piping hot stew. Huh. That's strange. How did I fall asleep? Well, there's a lot of things I should be doing. 
I guess Nick's gonna kick me awake soon. <laughs> you haven't brought up that name in quite a while. But I suppose that's only right, considering where you are on the timeline. For you at this point, everything the IPC does is still in a far-off future. <laughs> what a strange dream. Everything sounds like nonsense. It doesn't matter. It's time for you to come back to reality. How does it feel? Does waking up from a dream bring you misery? Misery? Well, no. <laughs> it's a shame you're stuck in a dream. Can't lay eyes on the land I love. It's so gorgeous. And you'd be willing to die. Right there. It's hard to believe someone so young would use that kind of analogy. <sighs> Ain't nothing strange about that. People gotta find ways to soothe their souls. Part of that's coming to terms with life and death. There's a saying from Aragon of Partial. Death is the fairest form of grace. For the good-hearted, death keeps their purity intact. For the cunning scoundrels, death ends things clean and quick. I see. Does that mean you're not afraid of death? If so, please extend your hand out for me. I suppose you're perfectly willing to apply the fairest form of grace to every corner of the universe? In the name of Dr. Primitive, that is. This is my final lesson for you. You shall thoroughly understand his philosophy. And with that, a star will pitifully fizzle out. No problem, teacher. But uh, there's something else I have to tell you. I was worried about missing my shot. But now that I've gotten a hold of you, I reckon I won't. What? How is this possible? The regression should have occurred already. Whew. You want to know something? I was worried I had it all wrong just now. But now, there ain't no problem. Because only an evildoer asks why before he dies. I ain't deaf, all right? Well, you were yapping so loud. Did it ever cross your mind I could tell good from evil? It's as Nick said, revenge needs no excuses. Just like how there's one thing in the world that doesn't need to be taught. Taking a shot at bad guys. How did things take such a turn? You're just a child. Even for someone born with a bad nature, the first time doing something like this should weigh heavily on their conscience. Hmm. Is that so? Well, I reckon you got that wrong. Be it a wanted criminal with the blood of many on their hands, or a young cowboy who's never fired a gun. Both share a common instinct in every sense of the word. And that's to put a bullet in anything evil. Muddle butcher. Secret little fudge head, tampering with my synesthesia beak. I'm gonna put a bullet in it. You think this is the fault of the beacon talking? <laughs> no, it's your fault. I actually mean it. Death is the fairest form of grace. Best is the muddle fudge like you. We're all to become the worst forms of evil with the time. Another journey begins. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. May as well kill them all. <laughs> There's no reason with you bunch anymore. Those with the loaded gun, those who dig the little grave, 
Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. Let's do it. Relax. <laughs> Free will, or was it fate? Destiny for oblivion. That's another good thing about dying. Whatever your excuses and ideas are, I ain't gotta waste time listening to them. Oh, uh, am I late? You referring to what's finished or what's only just beginning? The one that's about to begin? Oh, oh right, I should go get help. You need to get your head checked, like, right now. Get my head checked? What in fork in hell are... Huh? My synesthesia beacon's back to normal. Dagnabbit! <laughs> That's forking amazing! Hot diggity fudge! Uh-huh? So, you're saying everything went back to normal once you smashed this thing to pieces? Uh, I see. No wonder those assistant Annas only want to teach students one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I had a hunch. Sometimes it's just dead simple. Don't gotta be a genius. Follow me, Nameless. No need for reinforcements, seeing as how a few bullets will clear this up. Forking hell. You think you can find a better shot than me and Pentaconi? That's right, fellow members. Everything that's about to happen next isn't the end for us. With Dreamflux Reef as our starting point, a beautiful world shall descend upon all, and he will eventually cast his gaze upon us and the grand cause that we've forged together. Grand? Grand in what way, Moto Fudger? All right, folks, eyes on me. Now listen here, this whole thing's a muddle budget scheme. Go, scurry off and hide. Ain't no harm in being foolish, but no one to steer clear. You two again. I can forget everything else you've done, but slandering the name of Slumber Nana Monkey before Prof Nana Primon? Do you even know what you're doing? Montana, would you please just hear me out? Save it. You really think you can still convince him? Mr. Ranger, perhaps going back to our origins. Who asked you? I'm only gonna say this once. I ain't interested in hearing your philosophies or sob stories. You're a dastardly evildoer who will cease to exist once a bullet's put into you. <laughs> Guess what? I just so happen to be holding a gun right now. Since everything's turned out to be so simple, there's no need to use too much of my intellect. Catch my drift. See, I'm not here to teach a class, shirt brain. I've come to help. Class is over!
Destiny elongates time, in the same way ramen noodles are stretched. The ninja capital has turned into an abyssal hell under the devastation of evil ninja Osaru. Even the mighty Lan would rather close their eyes to the capital's sorry state and let out a long sigh. The only remaining ninja, Dazzling Ninja, aka Rappa, has trained an entire decade under the tutelage of Master Kucha to be adept in a wide variety of ninjutsu, gaining also the ability to recite lengthy mantras fluently. But deep down, Master Kucha is aware that it is only when Rappa receives the tutelage of other ninja heroes and embarks upon the paramount way of the ninja as dazzling ninja can she save the entire ninja capital. In the darkest hour of the night, a falling meteor streaks across the sky, marking the graduation of ninja initiate Rappa and her new identity as ninja hero Rappa. Greetings. Who might you be? My pleasure to make your acquaintance, too. We are ninja heroes who have received the true teachings of the hunt. We come forth to punish evil ninja Osaru. Ninja hero? Huh. It seems that my trial has finally come to an end. Trial? The final trial of the Mako Age. Destroy the Matrix of Osaro's house, and end the catastrophe that has befallen this land. Pray tell, have I proven myself worthy of the title of Ninja Hero? Oh, mighty Eon of the Hunt. What indomitable ninja spirit she has. Indeed, one as devoted as you rightfully deserves the title of Ninja Hero. Greetings, dazzling ninja. <sighs> Ten arduous years of training finally culminated in this. A new title will be conferred upon me today. I can proudly say that I have never gone against the tenets of Dazzling Ninjutsu all this time. <sighs> How I wish you were here to witness this glory of mine today, Master Kucha. With that, I shall continue my journey to take down the evil ninja. Farewell. Make no haste, since I am now a ninja hero fit to contend with the evil ninja. Would you let me join you in your crusade? No, for your hunt is long complete. This is mine, and mine alone. Low, 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 lone. Cut! I see. This talent would do well in special effect films. <laughs> we have quite some fascinating actors today. One perpetually films before a green screen. Another has been through a change of identities. And... And you, of course. The one with the most potential festive superstar from the land of the dreams. Please, let me apologize once more. Yes, it is true that I had a working relationship with Prof Nana, but I was coerced into it. As a mimetic life form, I inadvertently fell into the hands of my enemies and became infected with a lethal mimetic virus. Huh. 
I see. The spatial ninjutsu that you displayed earlier was truly ingenious. I wouldn't be surprised if you were a memo ninja from the Garden of Zen collection. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, am I right to see your act of betrayal at the Dean's office as a ruse to teleport us to safety here? Perhaps I was just trying to bail myself out of the situation. Bana yourself? you speak well this seems to be the answer for everything banana gibberish has long infiltrated every cell and organ of our body since Penaconi's dreams are rooted in the desires of the masses the mimetic corruption has had an irreversible impact on the dreamscape itself slum banana monkeys sweeping craze wasn't the beginning of things rather it heralded the end from that point onward, the moment of Slumber Nana was fated to be born. But what differentiates this from other mimetic viruses is the period and extent of its influence. Is that right? I'm impressed. It seems Don Hung is not only a skilled actor, but also has profound knowledge on communication theory. Trends come and go. But every single one of them eventually dies down. Much like how a violent storm quells with time. We may not be able to dampen the increasing popularity of Slumber Nana Monkey, but we can always work to hasten the trend's recession. How do we accomplish this, you ask? We'll have to introduce our lead actor for the night. Yes, it's none other than you, ninja actor. Hmm, the key is in my past, isn't it? Prof. Nana Priman once called you the Doctor's failed creation. I am extremely interested in this. What lies behind your insistence on narrating everything from the intriguing worldview of a ninja? When I made the connection between that and the Banacademics that we've seen earlier, I came to the realization that this might be the very reason you're immune to Slumber Nana Monkey's corruption. What Prof. Nana said also hinted at a possibility that links everything else up. That this is but another one of Dr. Primitive's experiments. As for you, Actor Rappa, you were already infected with another mimetic virus. As stated in the Cosmic Ninjutsu inscriptions, when used correctly, the venom of a scorpion neutralizes snake venom, just as poison wine may sometimes be used to quench thirst. What you said is right. I once fell into the clutches of Osaru's domain when sorcery ninjutsu was inflicted upon me. I had to undergo endless tribulations to break the fiendish spells. Only then did I manage to escape. That memory has long become a story I leave behind in my past. Though, if Penacani's future hinges on it... I am willing to bring back that memory and face it once more. Well, well, well. If the mimetic entities can overwrite one another, so can mimetic viruses. If we can just edit this virus out of our ninja actor's memory... There may be a way to destroy those nasty monkey synesthesia dreamscape. As the third act of a film, this can well be considered as a masterful development to the overall plot. And for the sake of propelling the plot forward, it looks like you'll have to take on a lead role again, actor superstar. Mimetic viruses, no matter the type, can be fatal to a memo keeper. But that's not the case for you. As the protagonist, you will surely be able to unveil the truth behind the numerous layers of foreshadowing in this film. Go on, 
take my film reel and turn her memories into the MacGuffin that will shatter this plot once and for all. The banana gibberish in my mind is getting clearer now. I have to move quickly. <laughs>